Okay, lovely. We're going to finish with um, Mark, who's going to talk through um, some of the recent developments in Drupal, so 10.3 and also 11, which is sort of due to drop quite soon, end of July, I think. Mark will fill us in. Hello, Mark. Hello, Aaron. Thank you. Um, let me see now. Okay, I think everyone should be able to see two browsers. Is that right? Yeah, I can see and a little notes thing there. Yeah, you fit in that. Yeah, two browsers. Yeah. A little notes. This is my PowerPoint presentation for today. Lovely. This is what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk more Drupal 11 than Drupal 10.3, just because Drupal 11 should be coming out uh, in the next week or two. So I think we should be looking towards that. And Drupal 11 is pretty much identical to Drupal 10.3 or whatever the latest ver version will be. Um, so I'll keep this down to maybe five, six minutes so we, we, we don't end up going over time. And we'll try to talk about uh, a new navigation menu, uh, small announcements um, panel, the workspaces module, I think is going to be very, very exciting for uh, uh, councils. Um, uh, Markdown and CK editor and project browser. And then if we have time, uh, automatic updates and recipes. So I'm um, going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour because we are kind of short on time. Uh, the new navigation. So we're all used to this, this kind of navigation bar here at the top. And we usually have a drop down when you hover over these things. I, I, I've just installed Drupal as a, a stock Drupal. This, this is not local gov Drupal or anything. Um, so I've got no extra modules. This is just Drupal core. And I've got two versions of the website. So I've got, well, I've got the same website said this one here, welcome to County Council Council. And this one here. And the reason I got two is because I want to show you how you can create all the content in one website and push it across to the other website in a, in a few minutes. So the first thing to look at is the navigation module. So if we install that new module here, now it is experimental, so maybe don't try it just yet, but this is this is part of what it will do when you install it. You'll see that the top navigation bar um, will disappear. And we get a new navigation bar here on the side instead. Um, I'm not sure if I love the idea of the sidebar. I kind of like the top one. But what, what we do get is we've get, got this navigation bar now split into two sections. So we've got this top section here and this bottom section here. The top section is all our quick links. So this plus here is we want to add something new. So you want to add a new article or a basic page or an image from the media or a new user to your website or anything you can add will be available here, such as a service landing page, service pages, subsite pages, all those kinds of things. So that's a feature we we're trying to build ourselves to local Drupal, which we've now abandoned because this will do it for us. Um, this blocks page gives us to our blocks listing. I, I won't show that, but the next one that here is very handy for us, which is our, our content page. So again, rather than having to uh, scroll through menus at the top, we can get to there. Um, and the same then with our, our medias list. After that, then we're down more in the developer areas down here, which shows us um, you know, our, our standard block layouts and all those different, uh, diff different things. I won't cut you up because I know most people in councils won't be using uh, this section. Um, there's also then a nice little uh, announcements panel. All, all this actually, all this flipping out and, and in and out, I, I, that's kind of what I, I don't particularly like about this. So you can click this little arrow down here and have it expanded all the time instead. Um, and there's a nice announcements tab here. So this will tell you what's coming up in Drupal itself. So if there's a new version of Drupal available, so your developers can tell you, no, 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 you can't have a new version of Drupal that didn't come out yet. You'll know it did, you can call them liars. Um, and if there's DrupalCon coming up or anything else. So that's generally the, the new admin um, navigation um, system. I, I won't go to that much more. And the announcements. Now, Workspaces. Workspaces allows us to create whole site sections. Before, Mark, before you go in, sorry, one question from Will. Can we add our own announcements to this, Mark, or is it just coming no, from... No, 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 no. This, this is a view of announcements pulled in from uh, Drupal.org uh, yeah. itself. So it's, yeah. it comes from here. Okay. We, we could add a LGD announcements section, I, I guess, but uh, mm. from here, just not, not just yet. Um, yeah. Workspaces, this is the, the big one, really. This this has been worked on for, I think, seven, eight years at this stage. I remember talking about this with people in DrupalCon Dublin 2016. Um, this allows us to create new site sections or edit existing site sections on the website, but not put them live and then put them live after a certain event. So the idea was, say, for example, uh, you're the New York Times and there's a big election coming up and you've got loads of articles for your homepage if Donald Trump wins and a different set of articles for your homepage if uh, Joe Biden wins. You can have all those created and then you publish them in one go. So 
this is the home page of the website at the moment. If I come down here to workflow and workspaces, and we can have as many workspaces as we want. So at the moment, we've just got this one here called stage. So we, 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 could, we could create something else. So if I switch to stage, now remember, I'm still in the very same website, still Drupal core.ddev, that site. And I refresh this page over here, nothing changes. And if I come to uh, say my homepage here in my staging site, and I edit this and I say, uh, there's gonna be new uh, tax rules and the rules are rule one and rule two. And I save this. Now this is my homepage and we can see it's updated here, but over here, nothing happens. Nothing happens because we haven't published this uh, this this stage. And we, we can also then say, let's say we want to add a new article and the article is going to be, so over here, we've got a list of all our articles. We got uh, new rules uh, from today and I'll save that. And I click on my articles list. Well, here's the new rules from today article in my list. And over here, when I refresh the page, it's not there. And we can add new menu items or add anything we want. But we have all these new things put in position and we're happy with the way they, 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 um, they all work and all the content. We can come to our workspace. So this is my staging workspace. And I can say, publish this content. So it's going to publish two pieces of content. So I will publish them to the live site. And when I refresh my articles page here now, we've got our new article here. And if I come back to my homepage, we've got our new tax rules here. And now my staging site and my live site are in sync. So if I click on publish content again, uh, it'll tell me there's no changes. Everything in staging is in live. I can switch back to my live site then if I want, and I can edit things as I had been doing doing it nor normally. So I can say, uh, we'll say a uh, new update. Now, since I'm in the live site, when I refresh over here, it updates automatically. So that's a pretty cool feature, I think, for us to be able to uh, stage a whole section of fostering or a whole a whole subsite or something like that. And then when, when we're ready with the teaming and we're ready with the, the marketing campaign, it's very easy then to, to click the um, publish this uh, this site section now and it will all go live, go live together. And it means we're not moving content from a staging server onto a live server or from, from uh, a development servers to staging servers to live servers, things like things like that. And we can have as many stages as we want. So you, you can have a fostering stage and you can have a, you know, whatever the other bits and pieces are. Um, I'll move to Mark down in CK. One, one second, Mark. This has sure, yeah. prompted some questions. Yeah, and I'm sorry, and I know I'm going very, very fast. <clears throat> yeah, no, no, no. It's good. This is great. But you can understand. Yeah, this is the excite. This is the sort of excitement. <laughs> Lizzie, so she was saying, like, would we have like a dev stage, dev stage live in one site, or is is that the use case, or is it slightly different? You, um, no, no. Different stages wouldn't be dev and staging. There, there would be different versions of things you would expect to go live at some stage. The dev stage live is would be more then for development workflow is that you want to build a new feature or change a color scheme or something like that. And you want to test that in your dev site first or your staging site. And then you put that, that across to your, to your live site. This is purely for content only that's getting written in, in, in the website. So, yeah. so again, something like say Brexit uh, referendum in 2016, if, if there was a very important announcement that needs to be on the homepage the next day, but there's two different announcements depending on whether the, the referendum passes or not. This would allow, allow you to do, do that. Um, or I, I, I know a lot of councils when they're getting their, their fostering subsites together, you got loads and loads of content and it's quite a headache to either copy and paste from the staging site to the new site, to the live site, or else to use entity share or something like that and try to get all the relationships between the, 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 the media you've got and the videos you've got and the content mm -hmm. you've got and the users and all those permissions. So this allows you kind of have, have a replica of your website inside, inside, inside itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and would that would that switch all users to the stage environment? E.g., if we had multiple editors, um, so Chris is thinking about it from a developer. No, they, they have to log, log into the stage environment themselves whenever they want to. So I can click on workspaces here, and I I'm, I can be editing live stuff. Caroline yeah. can be in the stage site. Uh, Julie can be in the fostering site. Somebody else can yeah. be in the next the next section. It, it's you know it's on a per per user basis wh where where you want to be or what you want to edit. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, and what happens if changes have been made to the live site before you publish things from the stage site? So how does it keep those two things in sync? 
I'm not sure. That's a very good question. Maybe that's I, too detailed that. now. But that's yeah. a very good question. I won't do it now, but we, 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 we can test that. Yeah. This is coming, so maybe we'll do a longer one on this because I think it's, yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, well, Thanks. this is stable in 10.3, so you, you can start using it now, but I, I think Finn tested it early on with our demo content and there were a few issues between our relationships between guides and guide pages and things like that. So uh, we'll probably have to have some sort of a LGD workspaces module to kind of fix up those little bits and pieces for ourselves. Yeah, okay. Tom, um, you got your hand up. We're coming up to three, so we, and Mark wants to cover a couple of things. Is it very quick, Tom? Sorry, I think you hit a thing. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. No worries. Okay. Um, sorry, if you've, if you've got to drop off, it's tech drop in now as well. So Finn will be switching over there. If you're, if you're needing technical support, do drop in there. We'll stay on for a few more minutes just to cover um, the other couple of things that Mark's I, I'll probably just go through these, these two, the Markdown and the, the project yeah. browser, because they'll only take a minute, minute each. Markdown yeah. uh, is a handy way for, for kind of, it's often a more user friendly way of writing writing code for people. So and it's built into CK Editor now. So if you want to have actually these these lists here are good examples. Uh, if you type the number one, uh, and rule one, oh, that's that wrong. One dot and space. Um, it will give you a, a, an order list with with, with I, you know with, with these numbers here for for ourselves. And when you click enter, you get the next one. It's just handier than typing something and something else and then selecting it and then coming up here and choosing your uh, that you want to number this and the same then if you if you type a hyphen and a space it will automatically become a bullet list and if you put an underscore and a word and an underscore after it it becomes italics so there's lots of those little shortcuts available now while you're writing content that you don't need to keep highlighting things and selecting items from the from the top um mm -hmm. Bold and yeah, all of that stuff. So just yeah, you through, can, I, I won't go through them all, but bold. I think it's two stars and then yeah. bold and two stars again, and that that'll, that'll make thing, things bold. Uh, yeah. So that's 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 a nice little editor um, improvement. I think that's available since ten point two or thereabouts. And the project browser. This is where you can um, look for uh, modules or things you might want to install in your website, but without going to Drupal.org and trying to search for them. So when you come to the extend page now, if you've got the the project browser. Uh, module installed, you get this new browse tab up here. And this lets us then look for uh, all the different modules that are available for Drupal. And we can search through them for them by a different uh, category. So show me all the access control modules and show me access control module that's uh, called content access, we'll say is in, the, is in the title. And that gives up all these kinds of things. And you will see then uh, there's content access by path that we we wrote as part of the Essex um, Essex fostering um, uh, um, subsite. Um, close, huh? I know all yeah, yeah I know all the developers will be screaming at this. Don't install things on live site from here. Uh, it's kind of okay. You 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 won't be able to. You click on the view commands and it tells you how to do this via Composer. So it's it's only for browsing things that you might like to put on your site. So you can see oh the ACL module does this. Let's uh. Let's install that, and you go back to your developers and, and get it installed. Um, that's what all it does, really. Let's you browse through different projects to see what you want on your site. Sorry, Mark. So th I think I misunderstood what this is. This is pulling in all Drupal.org modules? Or all is the it modules that are, are available on Drupal.org, yeah. And then you, right. you can filter them, show me only ones that are maintained and that have security coverage or things like that. So you've got these diff different different uh, filters. So so it, it will, you know, if, if you're... Your developer doesn't know something that might exist, and you fancy doing a bit of sleuthing yourself. You can do it from the do it from 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 here. It's it's really I think geared towards site builders rather than say seasoned developers that would be used to going to Drupal.org and finding bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but that's 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 kind of it's a big deal in in Drupal at, at the moment. Um, and then there's automatic updates. So when an update comes out for Drupal, it will automatically update itself. Uh, again, I'm sure all the developers are screaming at us saying, don't do that, don't do that. But it's written in a very, very secure manner for updates that it creates staging systems and doesn't automatically update it without kind of being told what to do, whether it's automated or manual. And the good or bad news is all the big providers like Acquia and Pantheon, I'm guessing Platform Station as well, uh, won't allow it to run. 
um, because you can't change configuration on their servers without uh, doing it tr uh, through a deploy deployment system. So I'm going to stop because I'm actually five minutes more than I should have been. So if there's questions, I can answer. And if not, we can uh, go in peace. That was brilliant, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, and maybe we need to do a deeper dive into workspaces and show that, but but, but it may be when we've sort of integrated it properly into local GovDrupal, yeah, because I think great. it's going to be a, a big one for content editors.